Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, let me give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh, I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders for your most honor. Well, peace and blessings to this service for the Lord of the Let's do a point for earth. I want to say Shalom to those that keep pushing. Double Shalom to the Israelites, it's looking like a sincere. Double Shalom to the Israelites. And the uh, Sir Abwati, my third, is looking like other nations. We want to say Shalom to the brothers and sisters as well. To the team that's not in San Francisco County. We come in week in, week out to prophesy the downfall of America, aka Babylon the Great. And yeah, we're just going to start it off with just a few precepts and we're going to go in the spirit. You know, because it's a lot to talk about. You know, there's uh, Donald Trump got elected president. You know, we're going to see how play out because there's not a lot of time left here in this place. So where is your mind supposed to be? Your mind's supposed to be on prophecies. Okay? Whatever. God, this is the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. If ye then be risen and with Mamashiach Yahushai, seek those things which are above which where Mamashiach Yahushai sitteth on the right hand of your hope. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Right, so you have to set your affection on things above. You know, because you're about to literally inherit everything. You know, you're about to inherit uh, you know, uh, people. You know, first and foremost, those new bodies. You know what? You know, to be 100% uh, perfect. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. Wow. Uh, you're about to inherit all types of riches, money, <coughs> women. Okay, people, because you other nations were created to save, to uh, serve the nation of Israel, but well, not the other way around. But now we serving Yah. Okay, keep going. Once you have Yahusha, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon upon the earth: fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence. Concupiscences and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of Yahweh cometh on the children of disobedience, and the which ye also walk some time when ye live in them. But now ye also put off these, these anger with wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Right, and who is that image? The Heavenly Father, you know? And his uh, his only begotten son, which is Yahweh Shah, because Yahweh Shah was perfect when he was on earth. He committed no sin, okay? When he came back as Yahweh Shah, he, he got it right, right? And that's who you should strive to be like. Because he was in the flesh, he was tired and hungry, and uh, he got upset, and right, all those things. So, you're supposed to honor your life after him, right? Not somebody like, especially T. Diddy, wicked ass, or these other different celebrities, okay? You're supposed to honor your life after your how about your now? These celebrities, and the Lord is judging all these bastards. Okay, they get locked up and uh, they get exposed to being witches and warlocks and sodomites. Okay. Uh, where there is neither Greek nor Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Hamashiach Yahushai is all in all. Put on therefore as the elect of Yahweh, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy kindness, humbleness, of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as the Mashiach Yahushai forgave him, <coughs> so also do ye. Right, and that's the type of attitude that you're supposed to have. You know, you're supposed to be meek. You can't, you can't still be the old nigga who you used to be in the world. Okay? And that's pretty much uh, black culture. Right. And what do black folks you say? Oh yeah, swing first, ask questions later. Oh yeah, um, 
know, it's a shoot first ass question later. Oh yeah, we gonna go rolling them niggas. You know, I'm sure this nigga ain't no bitch. Alright? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I can take that nigga, I can take that nigga girl. Alright? That's pretty much black culture. You know, I can be bad all by myself. Which is, you know, feminism. Which is the total opposite how, you, how much male child wants his people to be starting off with the men. Even the women too. Because you Israelite women, start off with the so-called black women, are, are the most out of order women that ever existed in the history of mankind. You know, and it's all by the hand of uh, you saw even the so-called white man. You know, he gave you the liberty to destroy yourself and destroy your nation. Okay? Like Esau Edom, he literally destroyed us from inside out, you know, through our own women. But now you have watching me I got this prophets out here on the highways and the byways to show you the right way. But only the elect is gonna get it. You know, because two-thirds of the nation of Israel is gonna perish. Alright? And rightfully so. Because they don't want to take heed to the warning that Yahweh Hashem Yahshua is giving them. Right now we're in the grace period. Okay? Grace is just a period to get right. Right? It's not a license to sin. I like the Christian church to tell you. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to add to that when you had said it's definitely like giving you licenses to kill yourself or to, to sin. Because when you go back all the way to the garden, you can tell who is the serpent, who so saw Edom. You know, the same characteristics, you know, deceiving, conniving, you know, telling the lies, man. Because when you go into Genesis 3 and verse 3, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the Alhaim has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And that fruit is basically going into like philosophies, doctrines, ways of the heathen, basically, and stuff like that. Verse 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. You know, basically lie to her, you know. You ain't gonna die here. Just go into it. And now look at that generations and generations and generations. Now look at Babylon today. I look at the state of our women. You know, they ate of the fruit of they ate of that fruit, that philosophy. That's why they acted so wicked. They into witchcraft. Just that 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 damn movie just came out. It's called what? Wicked. Who is the face of the, who is the wicked witch of the West in the movie? The so-called black woman, you know? Right. Just let you know, like, who in, who endeavors and in, in, endows herself in this shit, you know? Right. Yeah. Go back to verse 14. I got a precept. I got a precept. You know, so, just kind of land back on what, what the brother was talking about. You know how your Howard Shaw wants us to be. And what is its expectation? Okay, because you know, this is the grace period, and we have to show and prove and live righteously, you know, to our fellow man and to our brethren. Okay, okay. But the fruit of this, this is uh, so like this is Galatians chapter five, verse twenty-two and twenty-three. It says, "But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering." Okay. Uh, gentleness, goodness, and faith. Meekness, what the brother just said, temperance against such, there is no law. Okay? So that's how we have to live, you know, in this grace period, you know, before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah returns. That's right. That's it, brother. <clears throat> Verse 14, and it says, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfect. And let the peace of your hover rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Hamashiach Yahweh dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in all psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Right, and, yeah, it says teaching and admonishing one another. You know, because the scripture says what? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Right. right? Because if a brother rebuke you, okay, that's pretty much an act of love, all right? You know, and that's the part of the law. Um, Tyler, I can you get that? I think it's in uh, Leviticus 19, 18. Uh, it says, uh, suffer not sin upon your neighbor. Verse 17, and whatsoever you do in the, 
in word or deed, all do in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai, giving thanks to Yahweh and the, and the Father by him. That's right. So yeah, whatsoever you do, you have to give thanks to Yahweh Shai. You know, the names that you have to like, like uh, that we can bitch Beyonce, and, uh, well, Jasmine Sullivan, that bitch. Talking about some, yeah, I'm, I'm praying to Osun. Like, who the hell is that? <laughs> she said what now? She prayed to Osun, some African deity. <gasps> All right? Like, if you uh, are an Israelite and you mention in other gods, the Lord, like, what the hell? You know? Yeah, the, the biggest sin amongst our people, especially among our women, that's what's got us in trouble. Idolatry, man. That's right. You know? Then what do you think this chip is going to be? It's going to be a form of, form of idol worship, man. You know, right. you're going to bow down to this devil and, and bow down to his image and take the chip, basically, ultimately, idolizing his ways, man. You know, and that's a sin to death, man. You know, that's, the Lord is a jealous power. It's like, that's not a like thing to do. Okay, that, that is a big sin. Hey, even so-called worshiping Jesus, because our people, when they say Jesus, they think that they're talking about the God of the Bible. Nah, Yahweh Shai and Jesus are two different entities, you know? Because, number one, Jesus is not his name. So how can you equate Jesus with the God of the Bible? Because those are two different entities. Well, it's the total polar opposite. You know, Jesus is a white man. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, both are so called black men. To add to that, if, if you want to be technical, his name would never be Jesus anyway, because what does Yahweh Shai's name mean anyway? It means he's the Savior. Now, when you look at Joshua's name, what does Joshua's name translate to in the ancient Pedro? Yahweh Shai, meaning he is the Savior. So, how the hell can his name be Jesus if his, that name goes back to a pig or something? Right, earth pig. Yeah, earth pig, man. Right. Something had enough. If anything, his the English translation would be Joshua. All right. That's right. Keep going. Oh, that was pretty much it. Yeah, you said so too. Okay. Uh, you got that? <clears throat> God. This is uh, the book of Leviticus 19 and verse 17. It reads, "Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor." And not suffer sin upon him. That's right. So that's go ahead. I know you. No, go. I was just gonna say, just like you just brought up a point about uh, Jasmine Sullivan, you know, and these different deities, and and, and and it's ironic that they have these celebrities and singers and shit who basically are casting a spell upon Israel, that's you right. know, and, and because you you all love their so-called music, you know, their music is. And then they'll they'll cast something upon you, you know, or you readily accept it because this person is a celebrity, right. you know, and, and, and put them put them wicked demons on you through right. that fucking music. Yeah, and because Satan has uh, left-handed power too. Right. And I will admit, some of the music I like, some of her music it right. sounds good. Hey, but that's how they get you though. Right. You know, because hey, hey, even a good lie has some truth to it. That's right. You know? But. It's still a lie, because it's not 100% true. Yes, yeah, too rare. Okay, just for that. Psalms 141, verse 5, it says, Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamity. Yeah, so let the righteous smite me up, and it shall be a kindness. So if it's righteous correction, then you're supposed to welcome that because it's for your own uh, benefit. You know what I'm saying? And it's a part of our law. And it says the law is not grievous, so the law isn't to, to, to break you down. If anything, it's to build you up. But you, at times you got to be told about yourself. All right? And if you're going off or if you doing something that could be led to uh, destruction. That's right. You're supposed to be told the correct thing. That's why even King David said, he said, let the righteous uh, uh, smite me with basically of the lips. You know, let him, let him prove me a 
correct me, I know that it's, it's for good. You know? It's all out of love. Because you know? a wicked nigga or a wicked nigga woman are saying to break you down. You know, that's why I think it's in uh, Hebrews 12 chapter where it says uh, the Lord, he, he does it for our benefit. Yeah, Hebrews 12 and verse 6, I think it's For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourge, scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And if you endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all, all are partakers, then you are bastards. And right. not Right, and not sons. Right. Hey, if the Lord don't chastise you, then you a bastard. That means he don't love you. You just do whatever you want to do. And whatever consequence come upon you, that's it. All right? Then you have to deal with it. But since the Lord love you, he is chastising you to correct you for your own benefit. Keep going. God, it says... <clears throat> Furthermore, we have fought, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own flesh, but he for our profit, that we might, might not be partakers, might be partakers of his holiness. That's right. Because right now we're going through the purification process in order to be holy. Okay? And guess what? We don't feel good. You know? A lot of times you're in pain, you're uncomfortable, you know, and you might share some tears. Even King David said, What? Uh, I wet my couch. You know? Because King David was getting uh, chastised by the Heavenly Father because he went off. Okay? So he already knew the reason why he was suffering going through all that anguish and pain is because of his uh, sin, which was murder and adultery. Okay? Uh, you get that Ephesians. Okay. Uh, yes. God. Ephesians. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 3, starting at the 14th verse. It says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Right. That Yeah, so, uh, right, so the inner man, okay? Because we are all working on the inner man right now. It's not about the outside man. Okay? Some of us are not tall or we not rich. Or we not we not two percent body fat. You know, like some others are in, are in pretty good shape, yeah. You know? But we not the quote unquote mightiest men in this uh, world. And it's not even about that. You know, it's about being mighty in the spirit. You know, further. Okay. That Hamashiach might dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Right, yeah, rooted and grounded in love. And what is that love? That's the love of the how about Shemel You know? Hey, what did um what did Yahweh should I say? If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, that's what this whole thing is about. The relationship between how much me are shy and the elect of the nation of Israel, not the rest of you other nations out there, okay? Because the children of Israel, we the ones that's been beat down and ridiculed and um, first, fire, last, hired, everything bad that you can think of, it didn't happen to Israel like times 10, okay? Because you other nations, you don't need to be saved from anything. We the ones that don't have no homeland. We're not even speaking our native tongue. We're speaking English. Okay? Uh, anybody had something? 
Uh, I was going to jump over. Did you have a v, uh, Ephesians 4 on your list? Yeah. You? Okay. <clears throat> this is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 17. It reads, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of your mind. And that's what the brother is talking about. You know, all these things that go on in the earth that you Israelites are preoccupied with, you know, um, and, and you're walking in the vanity of your mind. And, and there has to be a change that's made, all right, through the spirit. Verse 18, having an understanding darkened but alienated from the life of Yahweh through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts, right? Your mind is still blinded by the things of this world, per se, all right? Um, going on, it says, uh, verse 19, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is like lawlessness, okay? And that's what you start to see more and more of, particularly when you're talking about our people. There's just, there's, there's, no, there's no limit to the, the, the fucking wickedness of our people now. You know, there were certain things, you know, just 30, 40 years ago, you know, you would never hear us utter out of our mouths. But now today, because of the time in which we living in, people say and do whatever the hell they want. And there's no consequence, so they think. They think there's no consequence for it, at least here in this society. All right, and it goes on. It says, to walk, uh, so like, to work, all uncleanness with greediness right and that's all you see is people talking about in their minds the vanity of things with the greed that they have everything is about getting a bag you know driving the latest car i'm over here i'm over there i'm eating this i'm drinking that right. every every and we spoke about this last night everything that that, that we see today is 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 fucking publicized that's right. you know I mean, there's no, there's no limit to what Jake would do. I'm drinking this. I'm over here eating that. Right. Uh, what you niggas do, you know? Right. Uh, and you get tired of that shit. You know got, what I mean? I got the new, I got the new PlayStation. Right, man. right. I got the new car, man. You, uh, hey, this is the Anton Davis spirit, man. Right. I'm riding down the street in my porch. Right. It's like, I heard get more nappier. Right. Whatever, dingy, dirty, right. dusty. So, uh, if I may, I'll go on a couple more other verses. Uh, verse 20 says, But ye have not so learned Mashiach. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shai, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, uh, yeah, former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, you know, and that's what our people are filled with. A bunch of deceitful lust you know you thinking that you gaining something but you actually losing as as one of the scriptures say paraphrasing hey man you know if you 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 give up your life or you give you know you want to keep your life well you're going to lose it okay because you're chasing after uh, uh, uh physical or uh, vanity physical things in in this earth if i may just a couple more verses verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Yeah, that's where the change comes, right? Through the spirit, okay? You, you have a change of mind. You no longer mind the things of the world, you know? And I know that that's hard for two thirds of our people. They can never see themselves uh, uh, um, being humble in the spirit. They can never see themselves being meek, as you stated, you know? Uh, because everything is about being what? An attention whore, right, yeah. you know? Yeah, puffed up. Right, right. Um, yeah, I'm that nigga. Or I'm that bitch. <laughs> Verse like 24. Right. Verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which after the Most High is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's right. Wherefore, putting away lying, right? Speak every man truth with his neighbor, and that's what the prophets are doing. We speak in truth to our neighbor, even though you niggas is wicked and you don't want to listen, our job is to tell you the truth. Simply put. That's pretty much all.
you know, just to land back on what the, the brother was saying, you know, to obtain the, the father's love, okay, and what this uh, brother Tazawan was, was talking about, you know, when you change your mind and change your heart, the renewing of your mind and renewing of your heart, then it, it comes down to, uh, 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 it comes down to this. Ecclesiasticus 25, Ecclesiasticus 25 and 12, it says the fear of the Lord, okay, is the beginning of his love, okay? That's how you obtain the, 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 uh, the uh, 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 love of the Heavenly Father, okay? Okay? You have to fear him. And what is fear? You have to obey the law, statutes, and commandments and have faith in Yahweh Shai, okay? Okay? And it says, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. Okay? And trusting in, in, in these scriptures. Okay? Just to land back on what the brother was saying earlier. That's all. Uh, God, and you know, as the brother's going into, yeah, we see the wickedness of our people. And, and it, it really is annoying. You know, it's vexing to see it, you know. You know, it's every day you see Jake into some kind of weakness. When you don't even try to see the shit, it appears out of nowhere, you know? That's right. Um, like, so like every time when you watch TV, um, BET, black, but they, they say black <laughs> educational television. There's nothing educational about this shit, man. It's really black evil television. Like they said in the movie, at the movie, the TV show, The Bone Ducks. Hmm. Like every time. When I watch like some type of black show, like what is it? Prostitution, drugs, mm. feminism, homosexuality, um, adultery. adultery, murder. God, right? is it is it is it BET owned by the small heads, brother? God. Yeah, see there, there you go. And they always put our people to, to be the face of it all. Make us look like degenerates. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, all those shows is uh man, it really shows. No man, we don't have any money. We don't have any money. We don't have no money, man. Yeah, man. We we see our people doing this wickedness and we are tired yeah, of it, And that's why the Lord is going to send his only begotten son back to rid all of this shit. Man. That's right. You know? That's why it says slaying of the Lord should be many. You know, and this is quick one. This is second Peter chapter two and verse four. For if you have smiting out the angels that sin but cast them down to hell and deliver them into the chains of darkness to reserve the judgment and the angels are talking about the Israelites, man. No, they, no, no angels rebelled against the Lord, man. You know, that, that is a story made up by Esau and Edom. You know, it, it, it don't make no sense. If the scriptures say they obey his commandment, what makes you think angels are going to uh, 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 disobey the Lord? But continue on, it spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eight person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overflow, making them an example unto those that sh should have lived ungodly, and delivered the just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Right, so yeah, with their unlawful deeds, you know? Like, even though which, you know, all of us are wicked. You know, we don't keep the law and commandments perfectly. But it's still a level to it, and we are trying to do our best, okay? Say, seeing a sodomite, that vexes me. Seeing an out of order woman vexes me, okay? Seeing a witch vexes me, okay? Seeing niggas vexes me, like just, just a group of niggas around in the circle. They ain't no telling what the hell they talking about. They talking about what? Like pretty much what I just said earlier. You know, what the brother said as well. Adultery, uh, uh, shooting and killing, 
weed, all type of bullshit. Nothing productive. You know? Hey, at one point in time, it was against the law for a group of so-called black men to gather. But now, since uh, those laws have been mitigated, now he saw eating him the devil that he is, the slick devil that he is. He's like, okay, well, they can gather around, but let's just put it in their heads uh, for bullshit. So let's put it in the, in the movies and the food and uh, the music about killing other so-called black men, about uh, pimping out their women and all that. Okay? And it's literally playing out right before our eyes. Like the curses are still here. Okay, the only way the curses are gonna be off of our people is when we get those two bodies, man. Right. Yeah. Verse, yeah. Verse nine, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. You know? Hey, just like when the Lord said, if you keep if you hold fast to what thou hast, I will deliver you from the from the hour of temptation. You know, the Lord got us, man. But for the rest of the people, or you Israelites, you so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, they don't take heed to this and continue to live wickedly, man. You women twerking your asses on top of these cars. You niggas being niggas shooting each other, man. And the Lord got a judgment waiting to point, man. God, this is the Psalm chapter 6 and verse 1. Oh, Yahweh, rebuke me not in thy anger, neither chasten me not chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, for I am weak. O Yahweh, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Yahweh, deliver my soul. O save me for, my, for thy mercy's sake. Right, and that's the type of spirit that we all should be in. Okay? You know, we shouldn't have uh, that all, oh, I, I got it type spirit. None of us got it, man. The only person that had it was your house shot. That's it. Okay? Because we are all flawed individuals. Right. E each and every single one of us. And we, we need saviors. Right. You had that uh, one bitch, Cardi B, talking about some, I don't know, honey, Jesus love me. Like, bitch, the Lord, y'all rush me I hates your damn Dominican ass. Oh, uh, whatever you are. I, I I think she might be Benjamin. I think she, I, I think she Benjamin, but her, uh, not nah, like Her mother is Benjamin, but her uh, dad is Simeon. All right? All right, so yeah, that's how she got that damn nigga woman spirit in her. Because of her damn mother. But she really a northern kingdom woman. But, uh, God. Verse 6, uh, verse 5. For in death there is no remembrance of thee, in the grave who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my groaning, all night make I my bed to swim, I water my couch with my tears. <laughs> right, that's the type of spirit he's supposed to be in. You know, begging, how much you gonna shout for mercy? And to destroy this place, you know? And it's just all just to keep uh, pride from me. I think it's, I think it's in the Job, where it says, uh, to hide pride from men. I think it's in Job 33. I mean, that's a good one, too. The spirit came to talk to Job, and so, Right, that's that's Job 4. Yeah, one uh, time. That's uh 1 Corinthians 11 31. It says, For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. That's right. Because like, we ain't trying to be condemned with you people. Hey, it's literally nothing here that's appealing to us. Even if we do might see or find a woman or whatever, and nine times out of ten, the bitch is superficial. I want a nigga with this. I want a nigga with that. So would you really want to talk to a woman like that? Like once you know that, 
and it's really nothing else that's appealing about this woman because she don't have the inner beauty. So it's like, ah, what up? But you should be so. Say something, got that. Can I start at 16? Yeah. This is the book of Job 33, starting at the 15th verse. It says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when sleep, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he opened the ears of men and sealeth their instructions, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Right. So the Lord is withdrawing you from your purpose. You know? And like the brother, it, it was the elder Kazak down in Mississippi. He said, even your mistake is uh, from the Lord. You know? That's why the scripture says, man's going is of the Lord. Because it's times like where I had a full plan thought out, I was going to do something. Then I turned out and did a total opposite. Then I'm like, well, damn, I should have just followed my, my plan. You know? Or you think you're going to do something and the Lord... Uh, Right, go throw a wrench there. You gonna do something else? You know. But yeah, it's just all to hire pride from man. It's uh, it's all to hire pride from man. It's just to uh, keep him humble, right? Ecclesiastic is chapter ten, verse eighteen. Pride was not made for men, nor furious anger for them that are born of the woman. Right. Yeah, pride was not made for men. Uh, go to the verse where it says, Pride is hateful before God and man. Think it might be around the verse as well. Verse 6. And it says, Pride is hateful before the power of man, and by both do it one commit iniquity. Right. It says, By both is one commit iniquity. Right? So, pride. Uh, pride is hateful before the hour, and man and both do it one commit iniquity. Right. One commit iniquity, man. Keep going. And it says, <clears throat> because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. Right. And that's talking about Esau Edom. Because Esau Edom is the proudest nation that ever existed. All right? And because of, like I tell you in second edges, because of the pride, the city shall be broken down, right? Because what you see here out in these streets, this is not going to be forever, okay? It's literally going to be all anarchy and chaos out here, all right? Sooner than later. Because America is going to get invaded by these foreign troops. Okay, they show you that in that movie. Uh, what's the movie called again? No, uh, Purge. Well, that's a good one. But it's the other one that came out on Netflix. They did a movie where the boat had crashed into the world. Yeah. Shit, that was my Yeah, yeah, yeah. leave the world behind. Yeah. God. So, yeah. And that movie is all spiritual. Because you have to leave the world behind. Because there is no, there is no benefit that you get from being in this world. It is all death and destruction, pretty much. Yeah. And it says in verse nine, "Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man, for such a no. covetous man." But such in one set in his own set in his own soul to sell because while he liveth he cast away his bowels. Alright, so he set his own soul for sale. He cast away his bowels. You know, and that's literally and spiritually. Because if you uh you know you cast away your inner man, when it says your uh bowels, like you do something that's that that's not convenient or not morally sound, you know, like here it is, you quote unquote raised Christian or whatever, right? But then you do something wicked just for money or, or for fame. That's right. What's that? Also you're giving up the power, you're giving up your rectum, you know, to a small hat. Okay? You're doing something uh, more wicked like 
blood sacrifice or something. Which is known that these celebrities do. They sacrifice a close family member, their mother or their father. Or something like that. And you people out there, you think it's far-fetched, but it's really not. Okay? You had something? You got something too, right? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 18. It reads, Pride goeth before destruction, and a hearty spirit before fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Right, and that's like what you're, what you're talking about, you know. Uh, these particular people want to get into these certain lifestyles, you know, and, and that pride is what motivates them. Right, that, that pride will lead them to their own destruction. See, because just like what you mentioned, these people have to give up their inner being, right, in order to share into the spoils of the designer handbags, for, for instance, the designer shoes, flying on private jets, the champagne life, in other words. You know, they have to give up their inner being, their spirit, their soul, in order to participate in that, right? And to have the spoils of the of, of the filthy rich, you know? Yeah, that's why a lot of these celebrities, they own drugs. They're pretty much miserable. Chris Brown is miserable, man. And as talented as he is, because he's very talented. He can sing, he can dance. You know, he can flip, tumble. He can play basketball. He can draw, he can do everything. But you don't have your how about me on shots. So all that is pretty much vain. Right. It's all vain. Right. Uh, Please cold. ask is 19 and 24. chapter 19 verse 24 he that have small understanding and fear Yahweh is better than one that have much wisdom and transgresses the law of the most high right so if you have uh, small understanding right but you don't transgress the law of the heavenly father you better than somebody who know everything and still choose wrong okay now can you go to Psalms 37 and 16. Righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Right, so yeah, a little that a righteous man have is better than the riches of many wicked. You know? Like the things that you have that you don't work as hard for, that's better than what uh Diddy got. It's better than right. what Chris Brown got. You know? Like all those people that Chris Brown had, it pretty much didn't really mean anything. You know? They was pretty much just jump offs. Because he ain't even with the, his uh, daughter's mother no more. And, uh, Blessings, man. Uh, uh, thank you. Brianna gave him a uh, herpes on top of it. So, what was the point of all that? You know? And I'm pretty sure brothers here don't, don't, don't got that problem that Chris Brown had. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. So all, so, all that shit is vanity. But Chris Brown got. So, you brothers out there, you need to count your blessings. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, hey, this is the best place to be. You got one too? Somebody, you got something? Um, uh, yeah, he, he can go first. This is Mark chapter 8, and uh, verse 34. When he had called the people unto him with his 
disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save him. For what shall it profit the man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Organizations, or you know, his uh, what you call it, the, uh, his infrastructure. Kind. You have to defile yourself, man, to make it in Esau's system right. in some type of way. Whether it's shaving your beard off, whether it's being a, 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 a degenerate, a right. immoral, lust. You know, he's going to make you get filthy to to be to join into his league. That's right. Like even. Even like on a lower scale, like let's say you were part of corporate America, they invite you to these, uh, oh, yeah, come to the Christmas party and all that. Come to the Thanksgiving party, come to the Halloween party, come to uh, Valentine's Day, whatever, you know? All that are satanic holidays, okay? And imagine if somebody cooks something and you're looking at it, it's some damn pork. What you gonna say? Oh, you know, I don't eat that, you know? That person gonna get offended, they gonna look at you different. Okay, so it's just best for you not to participate in the beginning, because hey, it's it's not worth it just to get the approval of some damn devils, or just for money that's about to get ready to be destroyed that really don't mean anything. It's just paper, just backed by nothing. Like the scripture said, oh, "What shall a man give in exchange for himself?" I says nothing, man. That's right. It ain't nothing even. Ask Esau, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He gave up his birthright uh, for some damn red meat, man. Now look at right. him. He hurt him behind. Right. He, he, he's angry that he is going into destruction, man. That's right. And we about to go into uh, 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 everlasting rulership, man. That's right. And that's why he's trying to get everybody to uh, sell their soul with him. Because he sold his soul for some damn uncooked meat. Jeremiah 2 and verse 33, why trimmest thy way, why trimmest thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou taught the wicked ones thy ways. You know, and that's a big problem amongst our people. They want to trim their ways just to be like Esau Edom. Well, right. that's a, a degenerate way to live anyway, man. Like the brother was saying, like, you want to look good and please the so-called white man. Man, fuck him, man. Because at the end of the day, his ways is death, man. All right? Just to get my money, just to just to be able to have the accolades like him, man. Hey, man, he, he's going into, that's why he's called a man of sin. He entered into perdition. He's going into destruction, man. You know? Yeah, fine. And that's why this devil has a diabolical mindset. He like, damn, if I'm going down, I'm taking some of you niggas with me. And you know, Bronx people, you know, as, as, you know in every religion, New Jack City, he got in trouble when he said, that's how Esau went to the world. He's filthy and defiled, and he won't ever want to be filthy and defiled. Right. Uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for the day that for that day shall not come except there come a fallen away first, and a man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Falling away is us losing our heritage. And the man that's revealed is Esau Edom, the so called white man in modern day terms, as a son of perdition. If we look at the word perdition, that means everlasting damnation. You know, because he's the only nation that doesn't receive mercy from the Heavenly Father. And it's according to the Zodiac Bible Dictionary. All you gotta do is just look up Edomites. <laughs> only nation that can't receive salvation or repentance. It even said it in the scriptures, Hebrews 12 and 16. You no, know, he had no place of repentance. All right? For you niggas out there that's trying to save the so-called white man and say that all nations can be saved, you pretty much kick it against the bricks. Alright? <laughs> Which 
you know why you're doing that. Number one, you're blind. And, yeah, Stockholm Central, you know. But, number two, yeah, how about Shmiel Shire got you pushing those doctrines? Because, ultimately, he don't want you. You know? That's the scary part. said of the Matrix, when she was talking to Neil, she said, we are here to do what we are here to do, you know, whether that's good or bad. So you have to pray to Yahweh Washington, I'll shout at you on this good side, because if you're on this bad side, man, your ass is grass, you know, but ultimately, all Israel is going to be saved. Opposing and exalting himself above all that is called God or war or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple as God, sure himself that he is your home. That's right. So we push that white Jesus. That white, I don't say white Jesus, I'm gonna say white Messiah. Okay? We push that. You saw you know. Because you even got kids over there in Africa that believe in that image. <laughs> they had uh they got their hands in like a heart form. damn image pushes, that's going to lead you to death, man. So, you know? Okay. Yeah, starting off with uh, his uh, partner in crime, the so-called black woman. Or really the Israelite woman in general, but especially the so-called black woman. Especially her. Because hey, even you northern kingdom niggas, you niggas worship the so-called white man. You go in you niggas house, man. You got white Jesus, Virgin Mary. You got a Got a whole damn glass, like glass, like all ornaments full of uh, idols and all type of shit. Man. Lady of Guadalupe. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, what? Like, what the hell is that? Okay. <laughs> Show me in these scriptures where a lady had a book after her, or what well, is Esther, but where a lady actually uh, 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 was was uh, given. Uh, a prophecy by the Heavenly Father. Right. Where is that at? But y'all want to worship these women. <laughs> okay? Y'all want to worship all these false idols. That's what's got us in trouble in the first place. Right. Goes back to that Queen of Heaven worship. Sure. You know? And all the tribes do it in a form of fashion. Okay? That's why the Lord got that nigga for the polite. Because he was coming in that, that black woman is God spirit. And uh, basically trying to demonize the apostles about the quote unquote rape doctrine. Right? And you notice when these other Israelite camps read it, I have never seen another Israelite camp actually break that scripture down. I've never seen it. You know, hey, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Like, they. They broke down correctly. They broke down wrong. There's no other group that actually broke down correctly. You know? Because if you don't, because if you don't believe that, then you're going against the Heavenly Father. Okay? Get my shit from this clown, man. Get my shit from that clown, man. Alright, you guys. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter, the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. Like these celebrities, man. Yeah, they look like they are happy and partying and kicking it, but they heavy after that, man. After that shit is over with, they heavy, man. 
And even the scripture tell you it's better to be in a, 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 in a house of mourning than in a house of murder. Because once that laugh is gone, you're back to reality, man. That's right. Yeah, Chris Brown, when he on stage, and all the girls like, oh, you know, falling out. All over this man. This man is in the background crying. <laughs> because the things that he did to get to where he is. You know, catching a disease. Uh, maybe mom would drop. So, what is it going on with him, honey? And that we come into that stead of the disciples. We are the disciples in this day and time of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Going on in verse 21, it reads, Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Right, and we find that today with many of us, right? And, and whether it be on your job or whether it be your family members or whatever, you know, uh, you're not in good company with them. So they separate themselves or separate you from them. That's right. And I know from firsthand experience, okay? Going on in verse 23, it says, Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Right, so these people today, they're miserable. They receive their consolation, okay? Because really, when these rich jokers, you take, uh, what's his name that just died? Quincy Jones. He left like $80 million to each of his 70 kids, uh, uh, Slocky, uh, seven kids. Right? But when Quincy Jones' spirit returned to the Heavenly Father, didn't nobody say, hey, it's Quincy Jones, y'all. You know, the angels didn't gather around and, no, no, he received his consolation, right? He got to wait until the second turn to come back, okay? And in his right fucking mind, you see? Because he was a weirdo too. Yeah. Woe unto you that are full, for ye, have, ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Right, so that's all you heard was all of these condolences coming in for a man like Quincy Jones, but yet they didn't tell you all the dirt he did to accumulate $400 million, you that's see? Right. So he received this consolation on the earth. That's right. And Quincy Jones was a sodomite. You know, it's a conspiracy theory about him and Will Smith. Right. <laughs> No, Will Smith is a satellite. Right? That's right. Kissing your own son on uh, the Ellen, what's her last name? Degenerate? Yeah, I call it Degenerate. Degenerate. Right. <laughs> God, I 
another thing. I was trying to get her name right, but that's, that seems more fit than general. <laughs> another thing, you know, all you wicked individuals, you know, instead of just serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, y'all pay double. Because you know you do sacrifices, okay? You kill one of your family members to make it, okay? You get your money and everything, but you're still miserable. So in, in, all, in all actuality, you paying double, okay? Like, uh, uh, who was that, Kanye, his mama, and then uh, Michael Jordan, his daddy, okay? You know, you pay double, because you know when you make a deal with the devil, you know he coming to collect, okay? Again and again. God. It ain't just a one-time thing. They gotta keep doing it, keep doing it, just keep showing their allegiance. So, you know, that, that shit weigh on you, man, especially as an Israelite, man, because your, your conscience, man, your, 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 your conscience is there, man. You do all this drugs and things to suppress your conscience, but it's still gonna be there, man. They be having fun and then out of nowhere, bam, another your conscience reminded you of the, of, the, of the fucking guilt that you have, man. Right. Esau don't let up. <laughs> Chapter 8 and verse 11. Proverbs 8 and 11. It says, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Okay. Wisdom dwell with prudence to find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord Yahweh is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth, do I hate. Right, he's talking about uh, wisdom, right? Because that's the main thing that you're supposed to get, is uh, wisdom. That's what the purpose for ourselves. Yeah. Or you said 17. Nah, 47. Okay, because wisdom, that's all you should be worried about. Because you might have money, but if you don't have wisdom, then you gonna you might as well just be poor. Come. You know, because right now, the Israelite man, the elect Israelite man, we rich in the spirit. Okay? We just haven't got the full, the, you know, like the full uh, translation to getting those new bodies and getting everything. Right? But it all starts in your mind, though. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, starting at the seventh verse. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Right. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So, hey, do it with your might. Okay? Because the Apostle Paul said, Well, this is our profession. Sorry, you old time. Okay, can you go to. Uh, Third chapter. Let's go that one. You know, because hey, this is our profession. Alright? You look up the word profession, it means uh, a career. Alright? This is the reason why we was born. My brothers have other things that they do, but this is the main thing that you're supposed to get better at. And you should strive to be is a prophet of your by Shabbat Shabbat Shabbat, which is the best job ever in existence. You know, it's to say the word of the Heavenly Father. Go ahead. This is Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Mashiach Yahushua. Right. So the high priest of our profession, you know, is Yahushua. Because he was that ultimate blueprint to be like Okay, so we have to model our lives after what Yahweh Shah did and how he moved. Right, he was meek and lowly and humble, you know, and he knew all things. Enduring the ridicule, the slander, all the the hardships and trials that come with it. That's right. Yep. So like the good, so the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
okay? Yeah, so. That was it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, well, basically, you know, uh, when it comes to these celebrities, people that have uh, special objectives, well, off, you know, my brother brought it out. They received a consolation of it, man. This is uh, back in 1923. I was shy up to his disciples. Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The point is, you know, people that's well off, got it like that, hey, you, you didn't have your fun, you didn't have, basically, you, you shared the kingdom when you saw Edom, man. You know? But hey, the Lord. What the Lord is doing, huh? you know, Teaching. He's showing that you know He's been in a lot of court to inherit that because the, 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 this is the this is the Lord's move. Uh, skip down to verse twenty-eight. Which you are in Matthew nineteen, right? Okay. Yeah. Go to verse twenty-eight. Okay. This is verse twenty-eight, and Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you that he which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one of them that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, he shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. All right, so now it is that we forsook in this life, Gonna receive a hundredfold. You know, for brothers who don't get a lot of women, you're gonna have a whole plethora of women. You know, you live in paycheck to paycheck, which the majority of us is. Okay, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna have, you're gonna own, literally own planets. So, you know, so, how much wealth is that? It's to own planets, own people, planets, the resources. Okay. Literally, you own in uh, resources, gold, uh, oil, um, uh, rubies, diamonds, uh, different types of metals. All right, know about you. That's right. All by the hand of uh, Esau, gonna give it to us. The scriptures say they gonna bring their. Uh, what that scripture say? They, they nobles and kings will bring their their substance or some to that effect. It's a lock here for butchering, but uh, I got a precept if you don't mind. This is the book of Psalms 125, starting at the third verse. It says, "For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity." Do good, O Lord Yahweh, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. Right. Let's get the NLT on that. It says, the wicked will not rule the land of the godly, for then the godly might be tempted to do wrong. O Lord, do good to those who are good, whose hearts are in tune with you. Okay? So, you know, hey, you gotta give them these scriptures, man. You know, in order to to, to, to receive really receive the true blessing. Okay. This is uh First Timothy six and uh, seventeen. It reads, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded, right? nor trust in uncertain riches. Uncertain riches, you know, uh, these things of the world, okay? Here today, gone tomorrow, right? Can you uh, read up, I think it says, you can be content. Yeah, uh, I can go up to that. Okay. Come on. Uh, let me 
Just trying to see where to jump in at. I just started the time. <clears throat> First Timothy 6 and 1, it says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of the Most High and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit these things teach and exalt. And if any man, so like, if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Yahushua Mashiach, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes and words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil uh, surmises, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. Right, so you know, the simple things in life are what we're supposed to be content with. You know, right. everything that Yahweh Bashim Yahshah provides for us on a daily basis because we just here right now just getting our daily bread, you know. And, and, and so whatever you have, you know, be, be thankful and grateful for it. And that's not to say that if the Lord want to increase you, he's going to do so, and you happily take it, right? But ultimately, you don't cope or uh, compromise yourself, right, to get gain. All right, let me go on here, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptations and snares, and many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So it's not money in and of itself, but it is the love of the money. Right, that is evil. Which while some covet after, they have air for the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, old man of the most high, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, and ultimately, that's what we're looking for, is eternal life. That's what we working so hard for, for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, that we would have mercy, not that we could ever gain it, you know, on our own merits, right? But it takes Yahweh Shai's blood for us to be uh, brought into the kingdom. You see, for the fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on, on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed the good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of the Most High, who quickeneth all things and before Mashiach Yahweh Shai who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keepest his commandments without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and only uh, Pontinent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting men charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living power who giveth us richly all things to enjoy see so all things come from the heavenly father anyway so he'll put something in your life you know sometimes it may seem as though he takes something away but that's in order to get you through something that he's preparing you for See, because not everything that you think is a tragedy in your life is actually a tragedy, right? Because the Lord can actually bless you through these tough times that you go through, right? That's why we talk about the purifying, okay? And becoming those men of gold, okay? Just a couple more verses. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. That time to come of these evil times. You know, for all the work that we do, you know, Lord, Lord willing, you know, the Lord will have that hedge of protection around us, our house, our loved ones, our children, okay, that they may lay hold on eternal life. And ultimately, that's the grand scheme of things.
Thanks to Salaki for being so long with me. <laughs> yeah, Sometimes scriptures like that. Yeah. We gotta get all, all the meat off the bone. They gotta come by here and do that. They just they, they didn't roll all the way down the street, didn't do that till he, till he saw us sitting out. This is uh, Proverbs 11 and verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. So, hey man, the riches that you people accumulate, man, it's not gonna save you. There's no way you can be able to deliver yourself from when the Lord has judgment to help you. After some of my bone thugs and harmony is, it goes, hey, there's nothing you can do when judgment comes for you, man. You know, and hey, when the Lord got it out for you, he got it out for you, man. Hey, it's a video out there of this damn person got into an accident, left up the car, the door flew open, he flew out with that car, and went into a power line, man. So I just want to show you, man, like, hey, the Lord will get you any kind of form of way. If it ain't the accident that'll get you, it's something else that'll get you. Just like uh, that scripture where I say, uh, let me find the angels. Chased by a girl, I ain't met him too. Verse 18, and it says, Woe to you that desire the day of Yahweh, to what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, and or went into the house and leaned out his hand upon the wall and a serpent bit him. You know, all those, those animals are animals that can kill you, man. You know? So the Lord has a particular way he, he can take your ass out, man. You know? Just like the guy in that video. Zaz got into an accident, flew out the car, and went straight into a power line, man. You know? So that is going to show you, you know, it don't matter what kind of stand or what kind of predicament you are in, financially or whatever. The Lord got it out for you. He got it out for you, man. All right. Proverbs 23, verse 5. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an evil toward heaven. So, right. So riches, those who set their eyes on riches, they, they do believe that they're in a better case because they can, uh, they believe that they have the money to buy themselves out of every situation. And, um, uh, one of the main challenges for people out here, I would say, not even just young men, men and women, is the, the acceptance of contentment. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is so important, because there's always the desire for more. And you have to learn, learning to be content can be challenging, especially when all day you look on TV or you see people around you probably investing themselves, getting ahead in life, as you say, all because they have more. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Just like the brother Rev, he said, uh, the Lord can increase you, which is nothing wrong with you. But it's when it says labor not to be rich, we labor to be rich. As the scripture says, he that hastes to uh, be rich hath an evil eye. Because you are willing to do whatever it takes to get that. Right. And if you understand that Satan runs his world and that the doorkeepers, you know that you want to step on people's heads do something wrong to advance yourself because that's you know, America's a corporation any day and it's set up by the wicked elite and they don't believe in righteousness and they, so they believe in being cutthroat and lying and stealing and uh, uh, manipulate killing killers to, to, to rob you cunning because uh, they even make an age <coughs> Caesars, like Julius Caesar, they was all killing each other. You know, it was all power. A lot of them was, what, they was family. You know? So those are the type of people who you visualize strive to be like. Right. Right? And that's totally off. You know? 
know? And yeah, we go throughout the apocryphal. It says, what? Many of the Israelites consented to their religion. Matter of fact, they did that before. Right, this is the book of Haggai, chapter 1 and verse 6. This is first Maccabees 1 You have so much, and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled. But drink, you are clothed. You, it's like you, are, you clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earned wages, earned wages to put it into a bag with holes. Alright, so that's pretty much how we all are. Because we are subject to payments in this captivity. We literally have to pay for everything. Alright? And since we are in this captivity, and you know why, it's easier to uh, deal with. But these other Israelites, which they should know by now, if they don't know, they will know, that this is not our rest. So you got all these Israelites that's laboring to be rich and trying to get money and doing all type of heinous crimes, okay, and blood sacrifices. In the end, the Lord is going to require your spirit, all right? Your latter rain is going to be death and destruction, okay? You got that? This is First Maccabees chapter 1 and uh, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to this whole kingdom that all should be one people, like we see right now. And everyone should leave his laws so all the heathen agree according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. Right. They said that many Israelites said, hey, we want to be a part of this community. We want to be a part of your kingdom, Antiochus. What they trying to do right now? Same thing. We should all be one people trying to make a global uh, religion, right. which is basically uh, uh, to, to do wickedness, man. Let's agree to just be wicked. Right. And that's pretty much what? The Tower of Babel 2.0. Oh, all right? Because that's what uh, Nimrod did. Alright? And who was the modern day Nimrod? You saw Edom. And was he doing it way, he <coughs> going way harder than <coughs> Nimrod did. Okay? And that's why the destruction of this place is going to be great. You know? Because they look at the foundation that America is, is uh, built off of. That's why. Daniel, when he saw the uh, statue, well, it was actually Nebuchadnezzar when he saw the statue, but Daniel interpreted it for him. He said what? That it's partly strong, partly weak. You know, strong because of the military, but as far as everything else, like the financial part and uh, the morality of this place is, is trash. You know? And that's pretty much how a society is supposed to be built. It's supposed to be built off of uh, the spirit, you know, before it's uh, physically manifested, All right? Okay, kind of. But yeah, hey, this place is done, man. Yeah, so. yeah this is uh, you know, just kind of land back and off what you're saying, you know, about riches, you know, and gain. Okay. This is a parable that Yahweh Shah spoke, okay? Huh? Uh, I was talking about oh, God. It's a parable Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah spoke. Uh, the book of Luke, uh, chapter 12, um, starting at the 16th verse, it says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth uh, plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? Okay, so this guy had a lot of, uh, he had a, a good harvest, but he didn't have enough room to store his fruits, right? And, uh, and he, verse 18, and he said, I will, this will I do. 
I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul that has much goods laid up for many years, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God power said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. When oh, then those shall, I'm sorry, then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So he layeth, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God, okay? So this man, he had a lot of uh, uh, goods and, uh, and uh, food, but he didn't think about nobody else, not even the Heavenly Father. And when Yahabashim Yahushua took his life, you know, he asked him, the parable asked him, uh, who should those things belong to now? So you got to think about Yahweh Hashem Yahushai every day, okay? Every day, okay? And your heart be uh, uh, rich and tender toward Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. That's right. And it says what? Uh, it says, thou fool, you know, that your soul is required tonight. So everything that you worked so hard for just went out the window. Right. You know? And even Solomon said that. That all this uh, vanity and vexation of spirit. Basically, like, who the heck I'm gonna leave my inheritance to? And now, after uh, Solomon died, he was left to his son Rehoboam, who was a fucking nigga. You know, a damn, uh, <laughs> a, a mixed nigga. A half Ammonite, half Israelite. If really, he was just Israelite. This is uh, Philippians chapter 1 and verse, uh, I'll start at verse uh, 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the, and the supply of the spirit of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Mashiach shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For to me to live is Mashiach, and to die is gain. That's right. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I will not. Uh, verse 23, for I am in a strait betwixt two having a desire to depart and to be with Mashiach, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy and faith. Right. So yeah, that was the type of mentality that Paul had. He said, hey, I'd rather be with you. Have a shot. But I'm here to do his work. That's the pleasure that we get out of this life is to do the will of Yahweh Bashmi Al-Shah, not the will of our own self. You know, because Yahweh Bashmi Al-Shah made this place to uh, basically punish the wicked, you know, and for an example, but like the brother read earlier, I started making more was an example of those who live ungodly, okay, of what not to do, how not to act, how not to think. How not to move with money, how not to deal with women, you know, because they, they even in this place, hey, women are polluted. You know, regardless of how fine or pretty that they may be or come off, they got skeletons in their closet too. Right? <laughs> yeah, and they and they done they done did all type of things that they ashamed to tell you of. You know? my head, I saw an article about Faith Evans, how you know, before she made it big, she was talking about how she liked to get passed around and and, and, and shared and all like this. And, you know, not saying that uh, the artist Vicky Smalls was no angel, but how you how you gonna get with somebody like that? How you gonna marry somebody like that? Okay? 
used box that's been passed around and shared by many a guy. Boy, you understand me? Kind. I like to get passed around. Like, what the hell? Just hearing a woman say some shit like that right. make, make my skin crawl. What the scripture said, all uh, weakness is very little. Right. Even uh, the woman, baby boy, the mother, mm -hmm. she went on and said her 40th birthday. Uh, she got she got a train ran on her. It was like hey. the best birthday ever. Oh my god. Hey. Like, hey, like Johnson. But she was really a cougar making this one. If you can really see through that shit, she like, oh shit, I done did some oh shit. And and I can't go back. So I'ma just act like everything is all good. You know? And I don't have no shame for what I did. I'm gonna just own it. You know, that's why the scripture says a wicked woman shall be counted as. That's what you gonna say? No, I was gonna say that 